Hi, my name is Lisa and I'm with Imagine If Libraries. Um, today I have a space themed story time for you. And we also call these story times um, early literacy classes because we try to model all the different ways that you can talk, sing, read, write and play with your little ones to help them engage with early literacy. So we're going to start with a story. And this story, I like this story so much that I made a little puppet to go with it. Here's my little astro girl. She kind of wants to be an astronaut, right? Somebody who goes up into space. Do you ever want to be an astronaut? I think it'll be pretty cool. So this story is called Astro Girl and it's by Ken Wilson Max, um, who is a fabulous African-American author. And look at those end pages. We've got lots of stars. And here we go. A little shuttle, a little space shuttle up here. And there's our Astro Girl. She looks like she's got a little Astro Dog too. Astrid, that's her name, had loved the stars and space ever since she could remember. She's looking through a telescope, which, um, which astronomers have always done to uh, investigate the night sky. I want to be an astronaut, Astrid told her best friend Jake as they gazed up at the stars. Will you be an asteroid when you come back from space? asked Jake. Of course I will, Jakey. I want to be an astronaut, Astrid said at breakfast. Are you sure? Papa asked. You'll have to go round and round the Earth in your spaceship. He swung her round. I can do that, Astrid said, giggling. What about eating food out of a tube or a package every day? I can do that, said Astrid, as she munched a cereal bar. She's practicing now. Okay, Astro Girl, you'll also have to get used to zero gravity, because there's no gravity in space, nothing to hold us down. We float around, look. I can do that all day long, Astrid laughed. What about all the science experiments? Asked Papa. Could you do those, my brave explorer? No problem, said Astrid, as they made rocket-shaped cookies. Making cookies is kind of like doing science, huh? Will a space cadet like you be able to sleep on your own among the stars? Papa asked. I think that will be very hard, but I'll do it, Astro whispered. Astrid whispered. I called her Astro. <laughs> At last, it was time to go get Mama. Astrid wore her favorite space t-shirt. The rocket ship. It's getting buckled in, just like you. At the space center, Astrid and her papa moved to the front of the crowd just as the doors opened. Wait, are one of these people her mama? Mama! Astrid gave her mama a big kiss. I missed you, said Astrid. Her mom is an astronaut. Do you think she's been in space? I want to be an astronaut, just like you, said Astrid. You're my hero. Wow. And that gives us a little bit more information. So if you ever check this book out, you can... Um, look at all the extra stuff that it tells you. It tells you about all of the different um, women who, from all over the world who've been in space and tells you a little bit more about, the, uh, about being in space. So, pretty cool. What do you how do you think it would be if your mama was an astronaut? She would have to be gone up into space for kind of a long time. That would be hard, but it would be cool too. All right, what should we do next? So you're probably wondering, what is all this stuff? Looks like a beach ball, pumpkin, kind of. It's an acorn. Hmm. This looks like space, right? But why do I have all these weird things up here? Huh. It's because I'm going to um, share another book with you. And this one's called um, If Pluto Was a Pea. So Pluto is actually a planet. So when um, Astro Girl thinks about going into space, she might think about going, to, like, what do we see? If you look at night out of your window, what do you see? And if you look through a telescope, what do astronomers see? 
you see the sun even in the daytime you get to see the sun i'm just showing you a little bit of it here but the sun is huge right see the sun but at night you see the stars and the moon and maybe if you're looking through a big old telescope you would also see some planets so i've got the planets in our solar system there's a lot of planets out there a lot of solar systems but we're just going to worry about our one solar system because we live on a planet did you know that we live on the planet earth that's this one right here Ooh, oopsies <laughs> My board is tippy. Um, that's Earth, and it is one of the planets in our solar system. And we're going to learn a little bit more about those. So I've got a book to teach us a little bit about that. If Pluto was a pea, do you like peas? Pea. And Pluto is not really a planet. It used to be a planet, but they decided it was too small to be a planet. So, if Pluto was a pea. And this is by Gabriel Prendergast, and it's illustrated by Rebecca Gerlings. Pluto is much smaller than the other planets. That's why it's called a dwarf planet. But how much smaller is it? If Pluto was a pea, the sun would be a tent. That's our sun. That's Pluto, this big, four meters, 13 feet. If Pluto was a pea, Mercury would be a marble. Huh, so she's eating the pea. The marble is right here. So Mercury would be a marble, a little bit smaller, or a little bit bigger than our pea. If Pluto was a pea, Venus, would be a ping pong ball. Ping pong ball. That's our little ping pong ball. A little bit, whoops, a little bit bigger than our marble. Bink. <laughs> if Pluto was a pea, the Earth would be a golf ball. Have you ever seen a golf ball? A little bit bigger than a ping pong ball? A little bit bigger than that? Not by much. Maybe that big? So if Pluto was the size of a pea. If Pluto was a pea, Earth's moon, our moon, the one that we see at night up in the sky, would be a blueberry. I didn't put the blueberry on because it would be too tiny. If Pluto was a pea, Mars would be an acorn, the size of an acorn. So I drew it the size of an acorn. There we go. A little smaller than our golf ball, but still pretty small compared to these. We're coming to the big planets. If Pluto was a P, Jupiter, it's the first of the big planets, Jupiter would be a beach ball. Beach ball size. Much bigger than our little planet. If Pluto was a P, Saturn would be a pumpkin. <laughs> That's Saturn. A little bit smaller than Jupiter, but not by much. Pumpkin size. If Pluto was a pea, Neptune would be a grapefruit. Oops. Neptune. Did I miss one? I missed one. Neptune doesn't come next. Let me go back on that one. If Pluto was a pea, Uranus would be a melon sort of size. There's Uranus. There's our next planet. Pr smaller than Saturn and Jupiter, but still a lot bigger than Earth, right? Now we're going to get to Neptune. If Pluto was a pea, Neptune would be a grapefruit. There's our grapefruit. Still bigger than us. If Pluto... Oh, no. Now he's going to ask... Is Pluto smaller than everything in the solar system? No, she says. She knows a lot, doesn't she, about the solar system. If Pluto was a pea, her own moon, Charon, would be an apple seed. So, that's tinier than a pea, right? If Pluto was a pea, Pluto's other moons, Pluto has lots of moons, huh? Nix. Cerberus and Hydra 
would be like grains of sand. So Pluto has four moons and one of them is apple seed sized. The others are even tinier. If Pluto is a pea. If Pluto is a pea, Pluto's smallest moon, Styx, moon number five, would be too small to see. That's pretty tiny. So I did put Pluto up there. There's our pea. But I didn't put the, her moons because they'd be too tiny. Too tiny to see. And you would be much, much smaller than that. But still not too small to think big thoughts and do great things. So even the tiniest can make big differences. And there, that's what I drew for us. And the end papers, there we go. So, ooh. <laughs> do you remember all those names? Those are some, the planets have some beautiful names. And when I was little, I learned them, and I learned them with a song. And I don't remember the song that I learned them with now, but I do have a song for you. Let's go over the names again. So we've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, which isn't really a planet. But what planet? All right. All right, so let's learn this song. And the reason that we sing with little ones is because when we're singing with little ones, we're um, teaching them about language. The sounds that make up the words are easier to hear um, in the song. So um, this song is called The Planets Revolve Around the Sun. And if you like it, you can look it up on YouTube. That's where I found it. Um, and it's a fun one for learning all the names. So here we go. And it's to the tune of um, the ants go marching two by two, if you know that one. So the planets revolve around the sun, hooray. Hooray, the planets revolve around the sun. Hooray, hooray, the planets revolve around the sun and they spin on their axis, everyone, and they all go spinning around and around and around they go. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, hooray, hooray. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, hooray, hooray. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, all whirling and twirling above the stars and they all go spinning around and around and around they go. Jupiter, Saturn, next in line, hooray, hooray. Jupiter, Saturn, next in line, hooray, hooray. Jupiter, Saturn, next in line, they're made out of gas, but that's just fine. And they all go spinning around and around and around they go. Uranus and Neptune, make it eight, hooray, hooray. Uranus and Neptune, make it eight, hooray, hooray. Uranus and Neptune eight, make it eight, the last two planets, aren't they great? And they all go spinning around and around and around they go. <laughs> so that's all our planets. Okay, so I have one more book for you. And this book is called Solway. And it's by Lupita Nyong'o. And it's um, illustrated by Vashti Harrison. And this is um, less about space, but her name, Solway, means star. And it's a really beautiful story about um, accepting and loving who you are. So it's a really cool story. Kind of fits with space. All right. It's got beautiful illustrations too. Solway was born the color of midnight. She looked nothing like her family. Not even a little, not even at all. Mama was the color of dawn. Baba, Papa, was the color of dusk. And Ma Mitch, her sister, was the color of high noon. Hardly anyone at school looked like Solway either. People gave her sister, Mitch, pet names like Sunshine and Ray and Beauty. People gave Solway names like Blackie and Darkie and Night. Solway felt hurt every time. So she hid away while her sister made lots of friends. Can you imagine how that would feel? Solway dreamed of being the same color as her sister. She wanted real friends too. So she got the biggest eraser she could find and tried to rub off a layer or two of her darkness. That hurt. She crept into Mama's room and helped herself to her makeup. Oh no, she would hear about this from Mama. 
So I decided to work from the inside out and ate only the lightest, brightest foods. Is any of this gonna work? No, that's her skin, that's her color. With a stomach ache, she went to bed early and turned to God for a miracle. Dear Lord, why do I look like midnight when my mother looks like dawn? Please make me as fair as the parents I'm from. I want to be beautiful, not just to pretend. I want to have daylight, I want to have friends. If you hear me, my Lord, and would like to comply, may I wake up as bright as the sun in the sky. Amen. When Mama came in to wake her for school the next day, Sulwei rose to find not a trace of daylight on her midnight skin. Sulwei told her Mama everything. That's good. You gotta talk to Mamas. Now keep it all inside, right? Mama asked, what is your name? Solway, she muttered. And what does that mean? Star, Solway whispered. Brightness is not in your skin, my love. Brightness is just who you are. As for beauty, Mama said, rubbing Solway's stomach the way she always did to comfort her. You are beautiful, Solway sighed. Well, you are beautiful to me but you can't rely on what you look like to make you feel beautiful. My sweet, real beauty comes from your mind and your heart. It begins with how you see yourself, not how others see you. Now up you get and out you go. Her mom is right. How could she, as dark as she was, have brightness in her, she thought. How could she have beauty when no one but her mother seemed to see it. How could she be a star? I think she's a star. But she doesn't see it. Sometimes it's hard for us to see our own beauty, right? Our own goodness. That night, a shooting star appeared at Solway's window. The night sent me, the star said. Come with me. Solway hopped onto the star and off they went. Long ago, at the beginning of time, said the star, there was night and day and they were sisters. They loved each other very much, but people didn't treat the sisters the same. Lovely, nice, pretty. That's what they're saying about her. Scary, bad, ugly. This is what they're saying about her. Wow. People gave day pet names like lovely and nice and pretty. People gave night names like scary and bad and ugly. She felt hurt every time. Just like Solway. Well, night got fed up and walked right off the earth. I think I would too. Day stayed behind and enjoyed making everybody happy in the sun. But then day grew too long. Day began to really miss her sister. So did everybody else. Look, it gets too hot, dry, I need the night. They had, there had to be a way to get her back. Day set off to find night and she did. I miss you, said Day. I miss you too, said Night. But you don't know what it's like to be treated badly for being dark. You're right, I don't, Day replied. But what I do know is that we need you just the way you are. Come and see. Night returned and the people rejoiced. We need the darkest night to get the deepest rest. We need you so that we can grow and dream and keep our secrets to ourselves. The stars chimed in. Brightness isn't just for daylight. Light comes in all colors and some light can only be seen in the dark. While day had a golden glow, with night everything had a silver sheen, elegant and fine. 
They're starting to see her beauty and her importance. Day told her sister, when you are darkest is when you are most beautiful. It's when you are most you. Could it be that night did not need to change? Not even a little, not even at all? Could that be true for Solway too? Now that night and day were back together, a little bit of night returned to day in the form of shadows. And a little bit of day returned to night in the form of moonlight. They were inseparable from that moment on and promised to celebrate the brightness in each other, whether people chose to see it or not. That's important. You see, the star explained to Solway, we need them both on their sunniest day and their darkest night and every shade in between. Together they make the world we know, light and dark and strong and beautiful. And she is way up, up above, looking down and seeing all these lights in the darkness. Solway rose the next morning beaming. beaming. There would be no hiding anymore. She belonged out in the world, dark, and beautiful, bright, and strong. And if she ever needed a reminder of her brightness, she could look up at the sky on the darkest night to see for herself. Solway felt beautiful inside and out. And the writer, um, Lupita Nyong'o, she puts an, a note in the back, her author's note here. Um, I'm not gonna read you the whole thing, but she talks about how um, she has dark skin. And when she was little, like um, Sulwe, she was teased for her, for her darkness. And she had to learn that same lesson that Sulwe had to learn, which is, and she says that nobody should wait around for anybody else to tell them that they're beautiful or that they're important or strong. Um, or worthy that they have to tell themselves. Um, and we, we should all remind each other that no matter what color we are, we're all beautiful and we're all strong and we're all special, right? All right, so some activities. If we were at the library, um, I would have activities for you. So this, so since we're not, we can't be together yet at the library, I'll just tell you some of my ideas and maybe you can make and do some of these things at home. So I made a puppet, my little puppet for Astro Girl. Um, and I would make some other puppets and then I might do a puppet show. So if you make some, maybe maybe an astronaut and maybe a rocket and maybe some planets, you can tell your own story. And Grown Ups, it's, it's a great way to get some talking going on and some storytelling, some sequencing. Um, and that's all good early literacy stuff. Uh, you could also make some, make a, a whole solar system. You could do it with balled up socks or balls or stuffies, anything of different sizes, and you make your solar system, and maybe you can even make it spin around the sun. Um, I also thought it would be really fun to get a big, big box, the bigger the better, and make a rocket ship. Maybe paint it. You could even paint it with sidewalk chalk. If you wet sidewalk chalk, it makes really good paint. Um, and make your own rocket ship and um, blast off down your own space adventure. Um, what else did I have? Oh, another thing I was thinking, was that would be fun if you like um, real stuff is you can take a tour of the International Space Station, which is up in space right now. There's astronauts there all the time. Um, and they, they, they film themselves in there and they show you around and they show you what it's like to eat in space, to brush your teeth in space, how to go to the bathroom in space. It's all kind of how to sleep in space. Um, so go to nasa.com and check out their um, tours of the International Space Station, the ISS. And one other thing that I thought that might be fun is to make balloon rockets. So they're not real rockets, but they're kind of fun. And I made a little video. It's also on our YouTube channel. Just look up. I think it's in our science. Um, it's on our science playlist. Um, it's balloon rockets. Make balloon rockets with Lisa. So you could try all of those things at home and um, keep looking at the stars and dreaming about space. Have fun. Till next time.